Hello everyone, uh, welcome again. Time for a bit more banter blitz. Uh, I'll play on the old play zone this time. Let's see, I'm not sure who's around, but I'll go back to the uh, oldest challenge first and see. Olan, are you there? Nope, okay. Good there, we can try another game shortly. Hello, Jay, though. If anyone has any opening recommendations, or suggestions for today, uh, let me know in chat and I'll try and do my best to play them. Caracan. What should we go for? Let's try the hillbilly again. This have to best is not the most convincing bit of Simon Richards' repertoire, but still it's got some bite to it, if I knew any theory. If the whole thing is to do something against this F7 tool. Uh, how should we do it? Let's develop some pieces first. I want to get Harry rolling soon. This could be a bit unusual. I have to play some weighty moves first. Wait for castles up here on the board. Hello, John, Orest, and Grisha. So today I'll be playing for about an hour and a half. And then I'll have a quick break. And then I'm going to do some tactics frenzy for an hour. Start. Oh. Uh, Zoom decided to pop up. Uh, yeah, and I'll be doing tactics frenzy for an hour from three o'clock European time. So stay with me there and see if I can match or solve anything. The checkmate patterns yesterday didn't go too badly overall. I got very stuck on one of them. Another one took me a couple of goes. Tactics are probably going to be a bit harder. And let me know too if by watching the other ones, I see there's a choice of uh, should castle long first, yeah. of easy, medium, hard, or random. So let me know if you want me to suffer and only try the hard ones or uh, a random assortment. <clears throat> and hello to the other people joining Alexandra Grunewald and Monkey King yeah well King's Indian of course uh, Grunewald I have to play that with white I'm a bit more flexible I'm looking at trying to get some crazy sack on d5 I don't think they ever work. At some point, I'm going to be playing e5 and h4. Do I play one more waiting move first? Basically, I don't want this to be an annoying kind of four check when I'm trying to mate. Today, I should play a bit faster as well than I have done in the, the last Banter Blitz, where it all came down to flagging in far too many games. I can, I want to play my knight into d6 and use this pin. Probably I shouldn't be allowed. Otherwise, what shall I do? Attack. Probably I want to get rid of this knight on f6. It's quite a good defensive piece. So if I'm not allowed to play an v5, I'll take an f6. Yeah, okay, so it stops an v5. Mm. I'll offer a pawn as well and hope to exploit the dark squares. Otherwise, my knight has a nice route into the attack by e4. I think this pawn should be taken, because otherwise it's just a good attacking piece. But giving up that bishop is 
obviously a bit scary. Now in the center, or oh, just go for it. Both look tempting. Okay, let's get Harry mobilized. Just the camera. My appearing on the screen. See on a slight delay. Mm, I probably want to stop this knight jumping in via c6. Let's have the rook first. And now we'll go with the h1. Okay, time to break up my h file. Mm, I can hear dog back in the background. Hope that's not mine. I locked her downstairs with the baby gate so that she wouldn't appear on the stream. So she has full access of two floors, which should be enough for her. Okay, open up. <clears throat> the nine rook a bit. Luke's over on the king side, over on the queen side, and also on my knight landing on f6. Mm, we don't want to queen exchange. Mm, I think I might have miscalculated with f5. I thought I could take on c5 with the queen, but then probably the knight could have been taken. So I'll have to take with the knight. Do I want to exchange a pair of pawns first? No. So the queen's come off, but I've regained my sacrifice pawn. I can still do something over on the king side. I can win a pawn in a6. I wanted more. Oh, coming with the g pawn is quite risky. No, as long as I don't allow a back rank mate, I should be doing quite well. Okay, let's just get rid of the knight. I think success for the circumnavigated that uh, back rank threat. Cheers, JJ. Good game. Solid start. Uh, Benj, you're always there with an early challenge. Are you still around? I'll give you a few seconds. Yep. Okay, what opening am I playing with black guys? Uh, I'll play the dragon in the first one at least, if I'm allowed. I'll do a hyper accelerated move order to cut out bishop b5 check. Unfortunately, that was a C3 Sicilian stuff. You can't have everything. <clears throat> I had quite an embarrassing moment in a game years ago where my opponent went bishop e3. And I took on d4, uh, recaptured him knight h6, playing an IM. Uh, I was already an IM. And both of us overlooked the queen c1 forked the knight on h6 and the bishop on c8, which would have been uh, rather a quick game, some six or seven moves and already a piece down and completely lost position. <clears throat> Instead, we had a hard fought draw. Although it was actually pointed out to uh, both of us during the game, which I don't think was the uh, very correct. <laughs> and we were both rather embarrassed for the rest of it. My favorite football team. Uh, well, 
at the moment, judging on their performance, I'd probably prefer not to talk about football. I grew up in Gisborough in Cleveland, and Middlesbrough was the closest team, so I've always supported them. Too much to say, followed, but checked out their results. But it's hard work supporting them. At least we stayed in the championship. At some point, there was risk we'd go down again. Now I want to go forward with this night. I can. I want to take on G2 after King takes. Do I have a good follow-up with this pin? Mm, probably not. I'm still tempted to play it. Should we just check on H3? I think it was possible I could re regain the piece after taking on G2, King takes, and swap in G5 and G4, but the Queens would come off. So at least I can keep some initiative going for a while. Don't need to move that knight yet. Let's get the rook in as well. Still don't think my knight is hanging. The problem is this bishop on g3 is a very good defensive piece there. And queen e4 was coming next move to get the queens off. Now this I'm trying to take on f3. I checked my pattern that was popping up yesterday a fair bit. Hmm. Okay. Let's get rid of the Bishop, which is a good defender if we're having to exchange something. So now I want some mate on h2, but with a knight coming to h3, it's not very likely. Uh, how should we do it? Let's play position on the queen side for a bit. Hope to distract him and then go back to mating on the king side. I guess I really wanted rook on g1 for the mix to work, otherwise it's going to be hard to cover all of the squares. I wanted to come back to c7, so I was defending d8. I have to be a bit careful my rook doesn't get trapped over there on h4. If I can't sack it for mate, it might be a bit misplaced. Mm. So I don't want to exchange queens. <clears throat> Let's go this way. Unfortunately, I don't have a light squared piece, so it's, I can't really exploit the weaknesses. And I've got 28 seconds, so I need to speed up. I wanted rook d5, but that blunders to knight takes b5. My rook is hanging. Probably b4 wasn't great either. You can win the pawn. Okay, it's going to be one of those where I just have to make moves and hope. What my tactics? Let's try and get my second rook to c5, and then I can sack my rook on h2 and get some beautiful mate. Yeah, all these discoveries they were unpleasant. The rook on e2 is stopping any of that. Ever working. Oh. I just need to play some moves fast and hope. I don't think there's a threat. I don't think I'm fast enough. Oh, then avenge. Too slow. Hello, Fito Nega. Nega. I should know how to pronounce that. Well played, avenge. Kept it good defense for a while. Good okay. Grand Prix. Nope. Hey. Possibly. Oh, I see the mate threat. 
be embarrassing to drop that one. Another make threat. We'll stop that too. <clears throat> the pawn. This line reminds me a lot of a hey, bishop b5, knight c6 line. Here, I think I'm a tempo up, so I'm hoping this doesn't work, or at least. If it doesn't work, I hope I'm not in a lot of trouble. So I can defend by putting my king up or pushing the pawn. So now the threats of taking on f7 and taking on d6. Feels like I've fallen into some opening prep here. But okay, queen d3 last move was probably more sensible if you're going to go there. Do I have to go king e7 here anyway? Or can I sacrifice the pawn? Get some initiative. Let's do a third way. Undevelop my bishop. Very strange opening so far. I've had to play my bishop to g7 and back again. To let my knight on the rim. Played e6, e5, and I much prefer that pawn back on e6. But on the other hand, if white's not got any more threats, I can start pushing things back. Let's look at King's Gambit flavor to it. No thanks. Let's just develop some pieces. <clears throat> uh, these days, I think it's definitely possible to be an FM, self-taught. You might need, should I calculate some things? Yeah, I think you'd need some discipline. It's very easy just to play one minute chess and pretend that you're doing chess work, but it doesn't really work like that. But yeah, if you, uh, there's so many tools out there now I think FM should be very possible. I think the main trick is always to play as much as you can, but then study the game that study the games afterwards to see what you can learn from them. And that's not just putting them through the computer engine, but actually thinking about your thought processes, even writing it down somewhere. Directly after the game and then comparing that with the engine and see uh, <clears throat> where the mistakes were falling. Of course, things are probably faster with the coach, but I don't think it's entirely necessary. Some checks. Yeah, this was a problem with the queen on d3 that uh, white pieces were quite clumsy. Okay. I'm likely to open up the long diag uh, the a7 to g1 diagonal here. So let's just be greedy and bring my knight back again. Or maybe I can now. If you make threats. I think this is one of those don't try this at home games. Neither side obeyed the opening rules. Grunevelt, hello. Uh, what should we go for? I'll play some gambit or d5. Okay. Hard to play gambit if black already gambits. Let's think. Uh, okay. It'll be boring to start with. Over 2,000 from current 1,800. Hello, Claude. Uh, I think below being titled the repertoire doesn't matter so much remember what I'm playing. Knowing the key ideas that arise from the opening is more important than specific. I think I was supposed to take on d7 first, right? These are in danger of being on a bit clumsy here. 
which is nice use of blocking. Yeah, so having general plans and knowing the setup so it's more relevant than specific moves in the vast majority of cases. But I think, yeah, that uh, openings themselves, once you have enough knowledge to be comfortable in the opening and have ideas of what the plans are, it's also important to focus on middle games and end games. But yeah, English, King's Indian, High Fruit Salad Dragon, that's very similar to part of my repertoire. When I was in IAM for a while, I was only playing the Hyper Accelerated Dragon and the Benko. So you're a step ahead of me there. I think it, I would, people repeat it the whole time, but the end games tend to show stronger players so much more than the openings. So learning a few key in-games really pays dividends. Now can I play knight e5? Take the queen, take, what's going on there? A bit of a mess. If there was a queen d4, I'll take, okay, let's see. <clears throat> That's probably at this point that go, if you, uh, Want to brush up your King's Indian knowledge, then my course will be out soon. As soon as I finish writing it, which shouldn't take very much longer. And the English is generally quite a good opening because uh, black players aren't used to facing it. That goes people start to develop opening repertoires. They have an idea against one E4, some Sicilian or E4, E5 or the French or whatever it might be, an idea against D4. And then they sort of trust that that's enough. And if an English happens or one out of three, then you can make it up. And it's not so straightforward. It's a big advantage of something like the King's Indian in your repertoire that it works against everything. So here we go with the end games. I'm not winning material straight away, unfortunately. <clears throat> this is quite an interesting one. With pawns on both sides of the board, the bishop should be better than the knight. But I've got the better structure for now. Although maybe g4 is a bit too ambitious. I don't want to allow these pawns to be exchanged. I could run my king around. Sorry, I could run my knight around to stop it, but then I'm worried that his king will come in. So that's, I wanted to go f4, but that was bishop d4 check to e3, fork this way. In principle, I don't really want my pawns on dark squares here, but I'm trying to keep, if they're five, g5, and at least I keep a better structure. Mm. Neat tactic. Can't be exchanged yet because the h7 pawn hangs. So forces him to go backwards for a bit. Yeah, it's a position that probably should be a draw, but I can certainly press for a while. I've got two choices, do I want to have f4 and g5 or g5 and h4? How do I make progress? if I have the f-pawns on the board to find a good square for my knight. Which I don't automatically see, so I'll go for the other one. Now if black could magically play bishop a1 to d6 check, I think you'd be okay. But as it is, the bishop might be a bit misplaced. Not 
just to rouse the h-pawn with a tactic that I've got knight d4 check if the bishop goes off. Actually, there's bishop b2, isn't there? Bishop b2 will be a good move. But let's just carry on with my plan. So which pawn am I keeping over there? The king and pawn in game should be winning because I've got the outside pass pawn. That's threatened that d4 check. Let's see if it is. It's possible that with the swap in f4, like as in time. Okay, now I think I should be winning. It's quite concrete. When h6 immediately, there was f4 check, king f5. But now I can play h6. And the king can't get back into the corner. Quite a useful setup to know. Good game, Grunewald. I think, yeah, we were, you're holding that for a lot of, a lot of the game. Hello, Onam. Are you there? We'll go for d4 again and see if I can make a bit more exciting. There's some end game technique there. And no problem, JJ. You were pretty fast. Uh, how do you challenge to play me? I'm. Fair de Norte on Chess 24, so if you're a premium member, you can challenge that way. But I don't think I'll uh, do a grob. It never really appealed to me. I'll leave that for Mike Basman. The perk. Let's, what that should I go for? Everything is quite aggressive. Let's go for an Austrian attack. I was clicking. I was slipping my knight f3. Okay. Should I just play this King's Indian style? Uh, sorry, Grand Prix attack style. I'll ignore what black is doing and get queen e1, queen h4, f5, bishop h6, etc. <clears throat> See if it works. Apologies to those who challenge me and don't get around to a game. I've got another hour, so I'll try and squeeze as many in. For a while, I'm going for the oldest challenge, and then I'll see if I can do it, just a random one. I'll be back again on Sunday with more banter blitz. So if I miss out today, we can do it then. I'm not sure whether that poem is really hanging or not, but I was just wanted to go on with it. Or the bit of h6 is a bit too much, so we'll keep the knight. What circuit do I want? Let's go to d1. If I allow my next two moves, it's going to be bit of h6 and knight e3. So e3 is a nice square for the knight, controlling the c4 square to stop any counterplay and getting ready to exchange off for black's important defensive piece on f6. Without that knight, I should be crashing through. idea to activate that knight. Now is my bishop going to be any use in the attack? 
probably not. So we'll get rid of what could potentially be his good piece. Uh, you can win the pawn on e4 here by taking on h6 and knight takes, but I think it's far too dangerous. Rook h3 and knight g4 is coming quite quickly. Uh, I'm actually, sorry, I can't pronounce your name, but oh, the Cottrell kid. Um, I'm recommending both knight c6 and my pet line, knight bd7, in the classical King's Indian. I thought it would be good to uh, give the option. I think objectively knight c6 is the more correct move, the sounder move if you're trying to get quality. But if you want to get an unusual position and outplay your opponent, then ninety seven is a good option. And no one has refuted it yet. I played against a lot of strong players. And it was my sort of only line, so people were preparing for it. One of those positions, sort of the typical old King's Indian positions, where white is a pawn or so better according to the engines. But the engine just sits there and says, yeah, we're better and can't find a way of making progress. And Black's kingside attack comes. Just like my kingside attack is coming here. Get rid of this knight. <clears throat> the queenside counterplay is too slow. Rook e8 is necessary here. Yeah. Good defense. Just crash through. Looking for the mate. Can do it the simple way. Fortunately, those all the pieces are in the way. Couldn't just do it. Good game on now. Um, these perk positions are very dangerous to play. The attack is coming quickly. You need to strike accurately on the queen side or know when to switch to king side play. Hello, Ronan. <clears throat> Warning, I'm going to move the F pawn at some point. I'm just uh, trying to get a non theoretical version. Or b5. I was expecting the d pawn to move. It's time. Uh, cheers for Cotter, little kid. I hope that it'll be good. I've had quite a lot of work into it, and I've not found any problems yet. Sort of surprisingly, because uh, everyone says that the King's Indian is inherently unsound, but certainly at correspondence, chess, even at the highest level, black is scoring perfectly fine. There's life in it yet. Uh, good. Against the Petrosian, I am playing the A5 setup and putting the knight in on C5. And thanks. Yeah, I was pleased with the Dragon books. It was nice how positive a reception they got as well. But uh, Sega Karyakin admired them, which was not the intended audience. So it was a very complimentary thing to hear. And I guess that <clears throat> yeah, this one has become more solid, but I'll try and attack. GM Ariane, the Sicilian can is a good opening, I think. Um, I guess 1e4, I suppose I really have to recommend the dragon, as I've written a couple of books on it. And as I was saying was a couple of days ago, that uh, I believe there's a new chessable course coming out on the dragon from Anish Giri. 
And if he thinks it's good enough to write a course on, then that should be good enough. I'm sure that'll be great analysis. Okay, let's get something in on F5. Keep trying to decide whether I'm going to move this bishop or not. But with the Sicilian can, you can also add in the Sicilian Tamanov quite easily. There's not too much extra you need to know. This one is much sounder than I was expecting. I'm hoping to be. Ronan sort of provoked a position where f4 was perhaps even the strongest move. Here, I don't think I'll be able to resist. Ooh, I was going to resist the exchange sacrifice on f6. Playing h6 uh, really provoked it. Now, a knight into f5, I'll just bring the queen in. Probably doesn't matter which knight, like which rook, even more of a decision. So the threat is queen g4 and into g7. And I don't think that can survive. I think it goes to the h file and queen h5 and take on h6. There are a lot of variations in the dragon, but I'm not sure quite how much uh, you need to know. Cheers, Ronan. H6 was too provocative there. Um, but of course, there are very sharp Yugoslav attack lines. Hello, Monkey King. See how it goes. Yeah, so the Yugoslav attack lines are very sharp and they need concrete knowledge. A lot of the rest is a strategic opening. It's like an English reverse, really. The wing gambit worked very well. That's Bantablitz. Let's give it well again. Taking everything. Okay, let's just grab the center. Positional with E5 or try and open up. Let's try and open the game. Yeah, the rest of the dragon is like a sort of reversed English. And you don't really think of the English as a line where you need to know lots to play it. <clears throat> You've got a good structure with an extra central pawn. And so it's kind of logical, unless white really goes for you. I think if you compare it with a Nidor, for example, then it's a, a much narrower opening. And so it should be a lot easier to remember. <clears throat> this is right with some strange like Scandinavian. But there you'd want your pawn that's currently on A3 on C6 to stop the knight jumps. Doesn't necessarily mean that I have enough conversation with two pawns here, but at least I should have some dangerous threats. Let's just bring out another piece. I want bishop f4, but knight a6 seems to control everything. Yeah, thanks, Grunevelt. It was an interesting ending. I think it should have been a draw. I was, I think even the king pawn game might have been a draw with, if you played for a quick f4. Mm -hmm. I want to get my more piece involved here somehow. Okay, we'll play bishop f4 now. I really wanted one extra tempo to play bishop d3, though. <clears throat> I'm not at all convinced now, because uh, you only need a couple more moves to fully develop. And then I'll be scrabbling around for, hopefully the a3 pawn will drop, but for one pawn conversation. F1 and B5 is somewhat useful controlling the C6. Square. Hmm, okay, I'm happy with that at least. I was worried the bishops would come off the board. 
At least with both bishops, I can pretend to have some attack. Chris Ward has done quite a lot of uh, treatments of the dragon. He's got his chess publishing column every month. And then I lost track, was it two winning with the dragons? I think there are some shortcuts in the Yugoslav attack. If you play the Topalov variation, as I recommend in the book, then that cuts it down quite a lot. It'll be interesting to see what Anish recommends. But yeah, I think if you want, if you want to play an opening without, where you don't need to memorize so many concrete variations, then Sicilians are probably not for you. Something like the Sicilian can has slightly fewer, but the dragon and the night off. Classical to have a lot of sharp lines because you're really provoking white already with your first move. You're delaying your development for a couple of moves with C5, CD, while white's opening up all those pieces. But in return, you're getting good long-term chances because you've got that extra central pawn. Let's swing the rook this way. So yeah, it's all about uh, provoking white. White will try attacking and you need to know how to defend. Have your good long-term chances. Whereas if you play e4, e5, then there's less you need to know because you've not uh, provoked white. I don't think objectives have got anything, any compensation here. But at least the pieces are still a bit random. And the same with something like the Karo Khan, where you're going for a solid base, but you're accepting that you'll be a bit more passive. But you don't need to know too much. This bishop is really annoying on b4, blocking uh, my rook out of the game. I want to provoke some knight c3. Okay. I have to acknowledge that keeping the bishops on didn't really work. So I just have to suffer for a bit now. At least if I win this pawn on a3, it's only. Oh, was I three pawns down? <laughs> I count the pawns for once. I thought I was two. Yeah, for three, this is uh, not at all good. The sad thing is that I probably even have to exchange off into some end game here. Okay, let's give my king some lift. Now it's just a case of surviving and see if I can win on time. Okay, two pawns. Uh, so queen e7, rook e8. Doesn't seem to go anywhere. Let's jump the knight in with vague ideas. Okay, now we'll come in, controlling the d7 square. I have a couple of active pieces now. Bishop c4, knight d5. Do I have any tricks there? Oh, yes, I do. It might not be better still, but. It's my pieces in it, so I have it. Strict to win back the exchange. Let's go with pass pawn. That can't counter trick the same trick as this way. It should be better because these pawns aren't very dangerous. And it's a lot better than a knight in game. 
being a long range piece means it's difficult for the knight to hold the right squares. Now, is there any danger here? I think it's only one check. So that H6 one. Yeah, sorry, lost track in this game. How to improve end game play. I see the people recommending Delavia's work, which is very good. So certainly if you know those hundred end games off by heart, then you'll be doing very well. I think there's quite a lot of good things. Custom Muller has written some good stuff. Turetsky's Endgame Manual is uh, exceptionally good, but requires a lot of work as well. But if you're willing to put in that work, then it pays off. I was about to say Rook B7 check, which wouldn't be clever. Cheers, Monkey King. That was the. Uh, you definitely outplayed me for the vast majority of that game. I had to use the clock. And here's an advert for Tretsu's Endgame Manual. Unchestable. I've got the uh, old copy. But I'm definitely going to invest in the Chestable version. I think it should work very well for that. Hello, FM Espia. Modern. Okay, let's just go for this hack. Any rough idea when I'll be finished? So I'm hoping to have the PGN files done. But I was hoping by the end of the month, but certainly within two weeks, they should all be edited and ready. Then I'll send it off to the chessboard guys to put it into the right format and I'll check over my work and then I'll start videoing it. So I can't say for certain, but in the summer, hopefully on the early side of summer. I'm not it's going to be quite a lot longer than I uh, anticipated because I'm trying to have a full repertoire against 1d4, 1c4, 1f3, and 1g3. Everything where you can keep King's Indian themes going. So this game started off as a modern. Now it's a weird, another weird Scandinavian where I've got a pawn h6 for some reason. I think it should be quite good for me. Again, black kind of lacks the right squares with this nine C six. Do we double those pawns? <clears throat> Should I keep kicking the queen? No, let's just go right into castle queen side. Play it positionally for a bit. While at the same time hoping for some trick at some point with a discovered knight move. I think that the books can still teach us a lot that the computers can't. Computers can, or well, with table bases, for instance, they can tell you what the win is, but not why. I found it really enlightening watching uh, Magnus appear on a guest commentator. I can't remember which tournament, but it was a table based end game with Rook, first, Rook and Pawn versus Knight and Pawn, I think. And it was very like my 
and game against Asipenko, where I went down in the European Club Cup. And Magnus was there with the table base and trying to figure out, even the world champion couldn't figure out purely from looking at the computer's suggestions why he was playing these moves. So you, uh, you get a book, then someone's done all that hard work for you. If it's done properly, I can explain to you why they're the best moves, not just that they should be played. And that's the same whether it's an opening book or end game. Really provoking me to play b4. I don't know if it's a good move. But... I meant to play b4 first. That was an Agnes all played. <clears throat> so the queen couldn't go to d5 because of knight f6. I'll be uh, pragmatic and exchange queens with such a good structure, such a beautiful knight on e4. I don't need anything else. Interesting to take that way. Yeah, that's push my knight somewhere. Swing the rook into the game. This is a good idea to challenge my good knight. Even if it costs the pawn, it's worth it. It costs the knight, not so much. IHS, uh, yep, yeah, okay. I will play some of the coffee house repertoire. It's been my. Oh, I might lose on time in this game. That's the only thing. I need to speed up. The coffee house repertoire has been my own repertoire in all of these rapid blitz tournaments that have been online. The last year. And Oops. <laughs> I uh, realized my rook was hanging. Oops. Well played, FMSP. You kept the game going. And uh, yeah. my C6 was an extremely bad pre move. That's blitz for you. Hello, oops, Kitty. Okay, time to play my. Of the repertoire. So this, I'm not sure exactly. I was fine with d6. Knight f6 is a main move. So I'm suggesting this Italian, where compared to the Gioco piano, I'm always going for d4 quickly. I'm not sure if it's got a name, I just call it the forcing Italian in the book. Going for the space advantage straight away. Trap in that. Probably just castle. Bishop up into G4. And thanks for cultural kid. I'll uh Probably not to see. I'm not sure if not to see four is playable. We'll pin that nine. Certainly isn't now. Bishop on d7. So if g5 is the piece that working here at all, probably not, because the bishop takes on d4 and covers everything. And sorry, Claude, I have absolutely no idea on the pricing structure. That's uh, all chessable. 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes. Oh, that move is ugly. Oops, Kitty. You really want your structure compromised. I think maybe it was too scared to play g5, but it had to be done. Now you've got the bad structure with no compensation. Can I open up the king here somehow? Bishop d3, take on d4, e5. Mm, let's do it with the queen instead. So I'm keeping hold of the pawn. Uh, yeah, GM, I, I, yes, I use, <clears throat> for the coffee house one, I used a combination of the other zero and stockfish 13 and 14. It's using the cloud engines. Um, for the King's Indian course, it's been another mixture, but I've tended to use the stockfish NNUE. The new one seems pretty good. My idea back when you threw is play five check. And I forgot that, that was my idea. <laughs> I went for the point instead. And then when it's a very forcing position, <clears throat> I'll check the old stockfishes too that sometimes can calculate tactics better. But I think the suggestions uh, from these new neural network engines might tend to be much more human much better understanding strategic ideas than the old engines. I'll grab that one. Seems a bit of a waste. I'll just develop. So how am I delivering mate? Queen H5. Rookie four doesn't really seem to be doing it. I could sacrifice the exchange, but that knight isn't very good. I guess I should be patient. Uh, yes, Claude, I think it was the candidates. You're right, when Magnus was doing commentary. I'm trying to remember, there was a game. Yeah, it was definitely, the, was it the first round of the second part of the candidates? Uh, where Fabi caught MVL in that new idea in the Nidorf poison pawn stuff. And MVL defended very well, but went to this end game that was a book tail based draw. Uh, MVL couldn't figure out how to do it and went down. Oh, and that had a problem. Oops. Up to then, it was because he was defending very well from uh, after that ugly 97 move. But yeah, 97 made it very hard work. Hello, Orest Fock. Thanks for your patience. Are you still there? Ooh, and we have the grub. Okay, I'll attack the pawn. But yeah, the problem for Maxime there, people might be critical that how could he not know the tail base position? For one thing, Magnus didn't know it exactly. He guessed from half recollected study, I guess. And that was why it was so interesting looking through it, even with very few pieces left on the board. There was uh, a lot of twists there and forced moves, etc. But when you've just played a game for five hours and you're caught in some incredibly sharp opening idea you've navigated, you're obviously going to be pretty exhausted by the end of the game. I've got no idea what's going on in this position. Um, if I count the pawns correctly this time, I'm a pawn up, but 
my e4 pawn is very weak. d4 is hanging, but white's already also ahead in development. Probably quite a good outcome for the grob, but not played particularly well. Karpovsky, for phone numbers, I can only remember uh, my parents' home phone when I was at school. After that, it's <laughs> I just had my own phone. No need to memorize any. I've had the same number for years and years now, and I can sort of half remember it if someone reads it to me and go, oh, that sounds right. But otherwise, I'm woeful at remembering them. The Greco-Italian. Father Jack. Yeah, maybe you could call it the Greco-Italian. Thanks, Meister Matz. Uh, I'll see if we get enough time to play. I'm just accepting the first challenges, the oldest challenges first. Um, if there isn't time today, then remind me on Sunday and I'll make sure we get a game. Yeah, I'm not sure, Kowalski, what happened to Houdini. I don't really keep up to date so much with the different engines. I just hear what people say about from their recommendations and see what appears to choose from. You'd have to discuss it with Matthew Sadler, who keeps very up to date with all the developments in the computer world. What's going on here? Very messy. Is this not nature seven a good attacking piece or is it completely misplaced? And if queen e5 checked, do I have to exchange queens? Or can I go on a mad run with king d7? Of course, I should exchange queens. But if king d7 doesn't lose on the spot, then I'll give it a go. It may well do. Queen takes g7. Ah, not playing the check. OK, I'll go that bishop. Still not sure what's going on in this position. Very murky. Uh, so it'd be nice if I could get my king to safety somehow. Yeah, that's, I see a check. I'm hoping it's useful to defend this e5 square. So if I now attack the queen. Yeah. I can't remember what. Yeah, this isn't the line I was intending on playing. It's a grub myself either. But it's not a line I've studied for a long time. So it can be five. This feels like one of those puzzles from yesterday. I was hoping for bishop a5 check, queen takes, queen c6 mate. But there is king takes b7. Hmm. And then I can't see what I'm doing. I can take the rook on a1. Then I have to deal with some checks. Okay, let's stop the checks. I'm threatening queen b4. So I guess the rook's going to the b-file. I want to castle queenside. I don't think I've moved my king right. But I need to move. Probably should have taken that rook objectively. Now I just have to win the queen instead. So I rest have seen my... Uh, Stalemate from our days today. Not a stalemate this time. Good game. Complete chaos, as any good game should be. Oops. 
Heather Karpowski. Okay, we'll go for my coffee house repertoire again. E6 is a, a tricky one for people who want to play anti Sicilians. Uh, <clears throat> if I can remember. But I think knight f3 is quite an interesting antidote. So you're getting open Sicilian type position, but hopefully not one that your opponent knows very well. Like the knight e7 is unusual. I can't remember. Am I supposed to move this knight? I don't think I need to yet. There's a couple of different ideas. Queen g3 and actually the end, these sort of middle games are not so straightforward for black. That's also 95 sex. Here, does 95 work? Okay, queen g3 is the correct move. And grinding. But let's try 95. So queen g3, and then you take with h4 and go g4, g5, and g3 and f4. And then try and play down the h file. Instead of 95, I'm sacking a piece to try and keep the king in the center for as long as possible. I felt like that's interesting. I've worked with Basman on the grub. Yeah, I was just playing. My hand was making the moves in the opening rather than. Uh... Oh, yeah, Mike, if you're not a premium member, then unfortunately you can't take part in this. It's for premium members only. You can still be in the chat, but I mean, you can't play a game. Okay, f4, bishop c5 would be embarrassing. So I need to move the queen. So I'm ready to play f4 to regain the piece. Or d6 and win the rook. That's a good deflection. Okay, I guess I should come back again. So can I win the piece here? F, well, let's see. I can continue to annoy for a bit. But if I do win the piece, then I'll even be material up. The bishop h6 is the way of preventing fe immediately. Then I'm toying with g4 and g5 to push those pieces back. Uh, Crown student, we're on the old play zone, the normal one today. My challenges are working normally. I'm not sure what the problem was last time. Take that while I can. Okay, that's a nice pair of bishops, so let's get rid of one of them. Also, if I can keep Black's king stuck in the center, then that should be very pleasant. <clears throat> the problem is Castle Queenside drops the pawn in a6 as well. So my knight sack on d5 has worked. To take, we'll just play rook e1. Let's just get rid of it and play the second rook over. Now, how am I crashing through? Should we have a look down the C5? There are, I think, too many weaknesses on the light squares here. And cheers, Mr. Eggs. Hope 
Hope to see you around at the tournament again soon. There's Kaboski. Yeah, the Knights Hex are very difficult to play practically. John Bill Bow. You've been here from the start. Are you still there? Uh, hi, Tim. Your father, Jack. Uh, what shall I say? Keep going up the dragon. Uh, against the London system. Switch the move order around. Uh, I'll go for the double Fianchetto. Uh, nice, it did risk not getting the <clears throat> dragon. Yeah, against the London system, I'll go the Dolphin and Chatter G6 B6 and play for knight E4 and eventually break with E5. I quite like playing those lines as black. I don't think the London system is as annoying for a King's Indian player as it is for other lines. So you have a double edged structure. You're going to have decent long term winning chances. And yeah, Kowalski, I think it it's always hard work just standing still as a professional looking through, not just memorizing middle games and end game stuff, but the openings change with the new computers. So you have to, your strong novelties that computers hadn't even considered five years ago are now top line and everyone knows them. Or there's some big hole in your analysis. And that's probably the hardest thing. Well, G4 was very bold. Not which one, B7. So very, ooh, even though I might have three check. Very risky. Yeah, before you could get away with having some slightly dodgy lines in your repertoire. But now, even if you're playing so I can win the exchange. I think it might be even better to win the bishop so that my rook can get in the game. At least it's even if you're playing a much weaker opponent. Then if they've got enough time to prepare and just look at your games and run a computer through, they'll find the holes. So I want some bishop e5 check and it takes d3 combo. I think I want to play the check first so the king can't go back to g2. <clears throat> Do I take a second pawn on c3 or an f4? It's not so much about the pawns, I want to. Or can I go root d2 check and root d8 and sack that? Mm, not sure it works. But should I play it any? Oh, I, I should do it this way. I can take on c3 in the middle of it. And the king's simply trapped. I don't think there's a good defense here to rook 8 d3. My all-time favorite chess book, Chronic Student. Uh, good question. Close that cage again. I wasn't really the one for studying chess books. As I was growing up, I might have preferred playing. So I was very lucky that online chess appeared just at the right time for me. I was a much more practical player. Um, and I studied, thanks John. G4 was far too risky. Claude, hello, I've been active in chat. So if you're still around, we'll keep up the coffee house theme. Yeah, so uh, I tended to play, what line am I recommending here? This one. I just play more than study and just learn from playing. 
And that got me more or less to I am level. But then I read through Kasparov's My Great Predecessors and actually learned something about the history of chess and the development. I think that really helped me progress. So that series I really enjoyed. Um, since then, I really liked Yasser Sarawan's Chess Jewels, that both for the stories and the chess inside were very interesting. I'm sure I'm missing some obvious books, but at the moment I would probably pick that one. Thanks, John. Hello, Reza. I'm good. <clears throat> Specialization uh, or varying openings, Father Jack. Uh, good question. I think, yeah, that people get a bit carried away with openings uh, at a level where they really should be learning more about the game. But in some ways it depends, looking at knight g5s and things, but that's just castle. It depends what your opening specialization is. I think you just want to understand the plans and the positions you're playing. Uh, for your results to improve. But for long-term development, it's useful being able to play a lot of different structures and understanding the dynamics of different positions. Let's just double and try one and do some. I know a lot of people get, oh, uh, I think there was a problem with that one, Claude. That's the problem with such big nine D6, there are going to be tactics popping up everywhere. Thanks. Yeah, things went a bit wrong in that opening. Yeah, people play certain openings that get very... <clears throat> Hello, old King Log. Nice your patience. You still there? Probably enough time for a couple more games. Yeah, if you just play specific specific openings that have uh, very forcing lines or one setup, if you just played the stone wall or something, then you'd understand that type of position quite well. But the rest might sort of pass you by, and you might be quite good in those positions, but you're not going to improve massively without understanding quite a wide range. I think it's like mine back here. But my banter blitz with the one on in kept being this line. I'll just go e5. I was going for some really chaotic stuff with the d5s. Yeah, if you play one fixed structure, you're going to struggle to play other ones. Certainly, I think it's helpful for junior players to play main lines that have generally dynamic positions and and they can understand more about chess. It might harm their results in the short term. But to take or not to take, let's just retreat. But I think it'll pay off. I regret only learning sidelines for a long time. It's very difficult to go from sidelines back into main lines, but much easier the other way around. Yeah, Claude, the square's got a bit... Uh... The dark squares were a big problem. No, he wants a bit. The d3 bomb is weak, but this is a very passive way to defend it. Can I push E or C here? Let's go E, add more pressure. Sorry, Pat Thoreau, if I've missed your comments. I... I'm trying to keep as much of a track on the chat while playing. 
as I can and not losing on time in the free game. Yeah, probably the Kotrika just playing the London system your entire life is uh, very limiting. Right, it's a solid opening and good thing to have. If you're trying to become a strong player, then it shouldn't be your exclusive opening. Hmm. And feel free, Father Jack. I think it's a problem that we have in in England in particular that uh, we've got a bit obsessed with sidelines, which are dangerous. And <clears throat> I've made a good living from playing a lot of sidelines, but overall it helps development to know the main lines. Otherwise you get a bit scared of playing the correct move. I mean, I have it as well. Uh, let's put more pressure on that. For example, against in various D4 setups where you know that you really should play D5 to take your space in the center as well, but you don't want to because you don't play D4, D5 setups. That's so very limiting. Yeah, someone like Magnus played everything from very early. But having a fantastic memory helps for that too. Nashville, when did I become aware of Magnus? Uh, the first one I played that he was in, I think, was a uh, San Vincent tournament. Oh, or King, that didn't. You had to square for your queen. You didn't have to go up. Ah, you're going after mine. Ingenious. That is a bit too much material, I think. Yeah, it's having been on where I think me and Magnus were more or less rated the same around 2200 in the early 2000s. But yeah, he quickly shot past. The first time I played him, he was already a strong GM in one of the Gaustel tournaments. I can win with D2 or just put more pressure on. And he already uh, was a demon. Close to 2700. Blitzed out some line. I was quickly an hour down on time. And by then it was already clear that he was uh, destined to be at least very strong. It's very difficult to know who, of course, is going to be the next world champion without. With our hindsight. Hello, Bicarios. No. Do I get a King's Indian? I don't think I've had one today. Nope. Get tromped instead. Uh, okay, I'll play it. King's Indian moves anyway. That's rather different with the double pawns. play full control of the four square. I know that in theory these are positions that Trump players want, but I didn't feel like going to the theory. But yeah, a reminder that I'll be swapping the bands of blitz at half past, uh, and then I'll have a quick break, make myself a coffee and have some lunch, and then I'll be back at three European time, two o'clock here, to try some tactics frenzy. Let's see how that one goes. If I'm not missing everything. Some tricks on C5, let's just get out of the way. Hmm. Current student, uh, question everyone asks me of how I was feeling after my game with Magnus. And it really wasn't terrible. 
obviously I was disappointed, but uh, I had never racked up the point in my mind. <clears throat> and I knew that he would come up with ideas. But I hope that if I had it again, hmm, I don't want to just exchange queens. Do I have a good square for this queen? Queen e4, knight d2. Queen c2, looks like I'm just getting my queen trapped. Let's just go out to g5 and see if the queen can live for a bit. It wasn't like I had just blended it back immediately. It was unfortunately a bit tricky to convert even if the engine was saying it was completely winning. I need to come up with a few more good moves. My nerves got the better of me, but... I'll just have to wait till next time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, Father Jack. Thanks for the game, Old King. See, try and weaken up this king a bit. Maybe I'll take on g3 and take on e3 and get some mate going. Or put one on h3 and get back rank mate. So my two ideas. I don't think I should ever get mated with my king h7. His rook and queen are the wrong way around for starters. Okay, let's grab a pawn so that the end game is at least a pleasant two. I was going to go rookie four, but then that just goes back to d2. Is there any point to that? Mm, can I? Maybe I can argue the rook is a touch better on e8 than e7. Why it's still quite solid, but a pawn's a pawn. Drop the bishop back somewhere. Let's try five. I want some some way of getting this tactic to work on g3. I haven't seen it yet. I should bear in mind that I might lose some time trying to find pretty moves. So let's just take the open file. It's a bit stupid on b3 as well. Okay, we really need to start accelerating now. It's a problem I find with blitz chess that uh, you can either play it where you enjoy the moves you're making and make interesting moves, but then you're risking losing on time because you keep trying to find a good move not to spoil the game. Or you're just in blitz mode and go, okay, I need to win this game. It doesn't matter whether I play, oh, find the bat rank came in. It doesn't matter whether I play a good move or not. It just has to be a fast move. Thanks. Okay, well, let's try one last game and then uh, I need to disappear. Uh, okay, we'll finish with, as we started, as I've sent me another challenge. Are you there? Apologies to people who missed out on a game today. Um, if you let me know in chat now that you were wasting the time, then I'll mark mark it and uh, the next one on Sunday. I'll put you at the front of the queue. <clears throat> this one isn't very exciting. I'm not sure is this how Svidler's recommending to play against the Fianchetta variation in his Grunfeld course? I've tried to go for something with potentially more life in my King's Indian course. This version, at least I've got an extra pawn. Why well, it's got a big center, but I'm hoping that long term that's not such an issue. 
And sorry, Kenzo. Yeah, I'll uh, remember. Is that your Chess24 nickname as well? Thanks, Batman. So I think I'm really gaining the pawn here, in which case White's big trump of the uh, big centers disappeared. And so there shouldn't be so much conversation for the pawn. And sorry, why must I lose? I didn't see your challenge. Uh, but I'll, if you're here on Sunday, we can play again then. My rook is a bit short on squares here. Why did I take with the pawn, not the queen? I guess it was still knight g5. E6 was a good move. Didn't we have that game in the last uh, session, though? Why must I lose? I'm pretty sure that we played a game on uh, whenever it was. <laughs> I'm losing track of days of the week. My last session. squares, give back a pawn, if white loses that square bishop then the king will be quite airy. Which I'm going to have to sack more pawns. Let's give that, let's give white the choice. So it was queen d7 an annoying threat. Yes. This has definitely gone wrong. All white pieces are very, very active. Mm, time to uh, suffer. Grovel for a few moves and see what happens. No problem. Yeah, I would like the mates there. I'm a bit worried that for example, queen d8 threats white could mate just as easily and is a quite a big chunk of material up. But the bishop pair should never be underestimated. That's the Giro started. The cycling events I really get into when I notice that they're on. And the Giro, having lived in Italy, a sort of special place. But I'm not very good at following cycling in general. So how much material am I down? The exchange and two pawns. Really relying on my bishops to do some magic. This bishop b4 is a threat, yep, so he stops that one. Mm. 16 seconds, completely lost position. Let's see what happens. such tricky things as well. Uh, where to go? That was not a good square.
well played event. You deserve to win that one. The first one, uh, I went 2 0 down there. I think the first one I should have won for that one. I had no chance. Well, thanks everyone for following. Uh, yeah, I'll be have a 25 minute break now and then I'll be back for some tactics frenzy. Uh, so stay tuned for that and I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.